I'm not in my country anymore. I'm in a completely different place. But at the same time, it felt like this is where I'm supposed to be. Like I am doing what I wanted to. I am one step closer to where I want to go. So it somewhere felt like a home, second home. Hello and welcome to the International Student Experience, a Swansea University podcast that delves into the stories and journeys of students from around the world who've chosen to study here in the UK. I'm your host, Dav Turner, and today I'm joined by Shrushti Mandy. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Dav. If we can just start uh, just by telling us your name, what you're studying, and really what your educational journey was to, to get to the, your MSc in virtual reality. Yeah, yeah, sure. So my full name is Shrushti Mandy. I come from India, Mumbai specifically. So I did my bachelor's in computer science engineering. And then I had a work ex in uh, Larson and Tubro. It's a multinational company which de- deals in services, like web services and stuff. So I worked there for around three years. And during the last year, I was like, uh, this is not fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this long term. So and then I was looking for which fields to go in. And I had done some projects in virtual reality before. So, uh, I mean, I know my f- common friend. So she had recently moved to Bristol uh, in University of Bristol. So I contacted her and then she told me about what this, what the course in general is. And then that's how I started researching. So UK was my target then. And um, Swansea was, it had a bit of an edge because of the kit that we get here. So uh, up, yeah, and then I applied and I got selected. And uh, good thing of that is um, I got a scholarship. <laughs> that was a huge, huge relief for me. So that that's what brought me here yeah doing masters in virtual reality which scholarship did you get uh so it's global wales postgraduate scholarship um they gave it to like 25 of us for the september intake so we are a mix a very diverse group we have vietnamese indians canadians people from us uh and a lot more germans as well So, yeah, and it was a £10,000 scholarship, which brought my fees down. Yeah, that was that was an amazing experience, to be honest. And uh, the journey for the scholarship was like a friend. I didn't know the scholarship myself. A friend of mine, he told me about it. And um, uh, so I researched about it. And then it had we had to answer three essays like three big essays, like around 500, 700 words or something. And it took me more than a month almost to draft (laughs) that. And I had all of my best friends proofreading it every now and then. Like, you know, I want this to be very perfect. Yeah. And uh, so I submitted that. And um, we were expecting the result in by the end of June. And by mid-June, everyone was panicking because we we didn't hear anything. So there was this Facebook group we were in for all the Swans University students. So we kept texting the admins there. That, Do you know anything? Do you know anything is happening? But we didn't get any replies. So no one knew. And then I think by the end of June, someone posted on our WhatsApp group that, you know, some girl from Cardiff University, she got the scholarship and apparently she's the only Indian to get it. And then r- randomly, I decided to check my emails. This was after the deadline was done. I was like, uh, whatever, we, I might as well just see. At least they would send a rejection mail, if not acceptance. And um, so I was just checking after... I think it was July or whatever. And I searched Global Wales and I saw a mail which was unread. And I was like, I opened it and on bold, it was written that you have been awarded the scholarship. It just blew my mind. I started screaming. (laughs) My sister was wearing headphones. She removed it and she was like, why are you screaming? I can hear you. And so I showed her the email and even she started screaming again. And then we went and told her mom and it was... 
it was surreal to be very honest and the fun part of it uh, i checked the email around 3 or 4th of july and the email was sent to me one week ago and i completely missed it but i'm i'm glad i didn't miss it altogether so happy times in the in your home then oh yes yes my uh, <laughs> my father had a condition i don't know if it was a fun way or a serious condition but he had told me that if you don't get a scholarship you are not going abroad and <laughs> i don't know but yeah but then i was like sir this is my scholarship <laughs> i'm booking my tickets <laughs> what would have happened what would you have done if you hadn't received it would you have just stayed studying in uh, in india then uh no 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 i still would have gotten here because i had all of my finances sorted on my own and uh, with the ex 3 years experience i was able to save up it and and i had taken an education loan as well so i was you know like i had my mindset like whether scholarship no scholarship i'm still flying because the, it's been my dream since i was a kid like when we were little i think some neighbors kids or whatever who were older than us they used to go abroad and then you know in our culture you know going abroad is a big thing so we grew up thinking that you know this is the dream for us this is the goal that we have to do it so no matter what came at my way i was going to come here that was for sure <laughs> Had you been able to travel um, outside of the country before this? No. So no. the first time you've left. Oh yes, this. This was my first flight. In, okay. Like first yeah. flight in my whole life and first international flight as well. And um I paid the flight ticket with my own money. I so like it was a big thing for me to be able to pay my own flight ticket. And I mean like when my aunt and um, their kids used to go they would offer my mom that you know we'll take your kids as well with us but then mom would say yes but then i was like no i'll come by train i'm fine with train but when i fly i want to fly with my own money that's a really nice goal to have yeah <laughs> and then and then you were able to you were able to do that so what was that experience like so you've booked your ticket you've paid for it yourself you know you're going leaving the country for the very first time it was weird in a way because <laughs> my mom thought that i am not at all sad that i'm leaving them behind <laughs> and she was uh, <laughs> she was getting really annoyed by that fact that i am happy <laughs> that i'm going but uh, i think i have never told them what i feel about going abroad so i don't think they know really but it meant a huge deal for me so yeah when we yeah it, when it was the day of the flight it was raining in mumbai uh, it rains here as well <laughs> but in mumbai it rains like 10 times more and it was pouring there was traffic heavy traffic we were late we we were supposed to reach the airport at 5 5 pm but we reached at um 6 6:15 or something and all of my friends were there from since 2 hours they were waiting at the airport for us but other my my dad was getting furious then you, you'll miss your flight please go please go check in so uh, i ended up going in late and uh, when we were out we heard a rumor that you know some private plane had crashed on the tarmac so there was a possibility of a flight being late so we were like let's see we'll just see when we go in we went in checked in luggage security everything done uh, we reached the boarding gate and there was no information of a flight it was supposed to take off at 9 pm we reached at 8:30 or something and um, yeah no there was no uh, you know the flight people there none of the attendants no one and we were clueless everyone and we were around 30 people from mumbai coming to swansi and all from the same university different course but all of us were coming to swansi university so it was a huge crowd of people on <laughs> like who know each other at least and uh, yeah people were roaming around people were some were panicking some were enjoying their time it, it was mix and around 11 11:30 they confirmed the news of the crash and um, 
they like were like you know flight is delayed by some hours then we got an official mail that flight will take off around 12 or something yeah and then even then they were still late we had to wait uh till like 2 for the take off to take place yeah and then uh, we reached abu dhabi the sec we actually we had a layover in abu dhabi so and so the other flight was already there filled and it was waiting for us fortunately and so we had to run from one terminal to another <laughs> terminal to catch that flight because the attendants there they were like go fast go fast the flight is waiting for you kind of made us feel guilty <laughs> but kind of made us feel special as well that you know oh the whole flight is waiting for us yeah so we ran we ran like crazy with our bags especially and yeah we went in and then we landed um uh, in the morning in london at like 8 8:30 or something yeah and then after that was done we had like a 5 hour bus ride from london to swansea i think that was the longest <laughs> ride i've ever been on bus ride when i reached the accommodation it it was a weird feeling in a way that you know i'm not in my country anymore i'm in a completely different place but at the same time it felt like this is where i'm supposed to be like i am doing what i wanted to and uh, like i am one step closer to where i want to go so it somewhere felt like a home second home maybe amazing yeah so the the people you traveled with did you find um that helped like did that prevent you from being way too terrified of being like this lone person having to travel thousands of miles from home oh yes did it making those connections beforehand do you think that really helped alleviate that tension yes yes definitely definitely because initially when i started researching and everything i was just one then i found someone on linkedin and he connected me to someone else he connected me to someone else and then i got a link whatsapp group which had loads of people going to uk for that semester and then we were trying to look for people coming to sonzi uni in so like the group started from 6 coming to sonzi uni to now 300 plus people from india coming to sonzi university and so we used to have important discussions fun discussions <laughs> stupid time pass stuff happening on the group it was fun but really helpful because if you don't know one thing there was always someone else who has already done it and who is there to help and uh, i was very impatient so i did all of my stuff really quickly i was the f- second person to have my visa stamped and everything so yeah i helped others people helped me so yeah it it i would definitely recommend who's coming after me that if you're coming abroad if you're going abroad anywhere be it uk be it us at least have like a group of two three people that you know that you can go together if you're like it's best if you travel together as well but during that process during that six month process you should have people who are doing the same thing as you because sometimes it can get a bit hectic so it helps to have other people with you in the same boat it really really helps have you been able to stay in touch with those all those oh, people yes. since then yeah 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 definitely definitely so uh when we came we had a huge huge group we were around 20 people my friend here anusha she also joined us she came back a bit later but she also joined us and uh, for the first 10 ish days we used to cook together so imagine 20 people food <laughs> being cooked together in one single kitchen it was a mess but a good mess and the food was amazing everyone had their own specialty everyone had their own task i still have a picture of the gas burner all four hobs are full like every like one different thing cooking on each hob and uh, we still talk we have events happening uh I think even today we are some are gathering for some f- food get together or whatever and yeah all of us are in touch we meet we hang out 
we even study together because some of us we have same modules so it's it's fun yeah sometimes it feels good that you know you have people from back home that you know you don't have to be someone else around them because sometimes some people you know tend to have a different personality around different people but because we can talk in our mother tongue and no one would be like what are you talking about like they would just understand even our slangs our accents so yeah that's that's good to have i'd imagine if you didn't have that it could potentially be quite scary you know the homesickness would yeah. really hit hard oh yeah so having that network of people who you knew beforehand but even having that network yeah. when you're here helps alleviate that yeah 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 it does it does has that extended then to um, any societies? Have you been able to like expand your community even further than that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have joined Hindu Society here in Swansea University. So I'm the sports coordinator and we try to uh, organize some sports events. We were able to organize one, two events last semester. Uh, this semester we had a holy festival that happened around March. So it's like a bu- huge festival in India. It's the end of... A harvest season and we celebrated by playing with colors it just happened on singleton campus yeah, yeah. so yeah i am part of the society what's your favorite sport then to do uh uh swimming i i love swimming um i was introduced to it when i was six six ish and um i've loved it ever since that i mean i play other sports as well i play badminton volleyball football as well but swimming is really special to me and like i started from the baby pool where you know it's just this high and you know kids are waddling around i started from there and now where i know every single stroke that is so yeah it is really special to me if you've been able to do that a lot here here no unfortunately but this summer i have my swimsuit ready i have my every, every equipment ready and we have planned to actually you know go swimming this after submissions are done are you going to like use the indoor pool here or are you going to do like wild swimming first i'll try the indoor one that we have <laughs> on singleton campus and a friend of mine he did suggest that you know we go to uh three cliffs bay or something mm, yeah. and then he said he had a paddle boat and um, they have this uh cheese board thingy that they do every summer so we are going to try to do that as well excellent um how do you manage because you you seem quite busy like how do you manage the balance between working and studying for your msc and also the societies and making sure that you're looking after like yourself as well sometimes i think i haven't <laughs> to be very honest i it gets really hectic hectic at days where you have to do assignments you have work pending you have to cook food you have to wash the dishes you have to do the laundry you it gets a lot but then i like try to categorize them like which is important and so like even if i have my assignment pending and i'm stressed i would cook because it helps me clear up my mind or you know i like to do the house chores to be honest <laughs> sometimes i feel that i might make a good housewife but i don't want to be one <laughs> I am trying to repair my sleep schedule but <laughs> <laughs> I'm still failing at it. I used to sleep at like 3 a.m. and then wake up at 8. For work, I mean, it's part time right now. So I give like 2 days a week to work and then the rest I focus on my assignments and societies. And for societies, we usually have our meetings in the evening. So that's a good thing so you know finish your uni your uh, whatever stuff then meeting and then come home and you know do your household work what do you do for work i am a vr content developer and trainer at university of wales trinity st david's oh fair play how important was it for you to get work when you were here did you need to to find part time work i didn't but i still did like getting that scholarship it was a huge help but if i hadn't gotten that scholarship then it was like really 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 important for me to get a job but now it is that because of that job i can have work experience in the uk and then when i move 
ahead in my career i can use this because uh a lot of people when they graduate and then they don't have experience in their field it sometimes becomes hard to get a job in the market because they want experience and we had just graduated and we don't have experience so it gets hard a bit so it wasn't necessary but it was still a bit necessary for me yeah still important to get that yes, experience yeah yeah how else have you found swans you've been here for a while now you've been in the uk how different is that to back home it is very open i would say uh, it, because uh, i come from mumbai mumbai is similar to london and um, it is crowded it is really crowded and we have tall buildings everywhere <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people everywhere like at all times like there's no one place that you'll find peace and quiet and here it's completely opposite it is really pe- peaceful really quiet really sweet in a way but for us we had to travel 3 4 hours to go to some natural waterfall place or some forest for tent camping and stuff so here it is really it feels calm yeah, there's a calmness here but in mumbai it was rush rush hour every single day at every single moment what about the people how have you found like the people of wales people of swansea like the the wider community outside of the university how have you found interacting with them very polite very very polite like the very first time i came like i was doing grocery shopping in only and um, i was pulling out that cart and there was someone behind me and even though i was the one who was backing up that person said sorry to me <laughs> and i was like he shouldn't be saying sorry to me i should be the one saying sorry to him like in india no one cares they'll just bump into you and then they'll run off at least in mumbai i mean there might be other people but i haven't met them so <laughs> here they are very very polite like even if you even if it's your mistake they will say sorry and they will apologize and move aside so and really sweet and really accommodating i don't think i've had any bad experiences so far so it's been good for me it's been really good speaking of wales i have had chance to roam around in wales because of the scholarship so they took us to aberystwyth cardiff so wales is really beautiful i wasn't exp- sorry but i wasn't expecting wales to be this beautiful but you know it has raised the bar up high for me what's your favorite thing you've got to say what's your favorite thing you've been able to do and you've been over here when we went to aberystwyth we were we were staying in a mansion <laughs> and that was royal that was really <laughs> we had a huge room to ourselves uh, i think it would be big as big as the studio and um huge bathtub <laughs> <laughs> some people might not fee- think that it is it is important but it is it oh that experience was amazing and then they had a royal dinner royal breakfast whole huge 30 people dining room was huge like it was high with chandeliers well lit and even the mansion was beautiful it was beautiful i think that's the best experience i've had in wales so far. and this is all arranged through the the scholarship yes table. yes yeah yeah right. i'm really grateful that they do that because i don't think i can afford that anytime <laughs> soon so brilliant experience all around with that scholarship oh, you recommend yes. it to so if someone was considering applying for that scholarship would you recommend oh that? yes definitely i've had two people reach out to me on linkedin recently so they did ask for um, tips and how to do that so yeah i would definitely recommend i even suggested it to my sister that if you're coming to uk target wales so you know you get the full experience what she considering studying she's not sure she wanted to do medical but then she's now doing engineering yeah following you <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah in a way but she wants to do something which has a little bit of both maybe biotech or something and i think biotechnology right now has a lot of scope here in the uk so she might do that how your family reacted how were they how did they feel with you leaving india and coming to the uk were they happy for you to, to come study abroad <laughs> um no i mean 
I'm not going to badmouth them, but I think every parent is sad that their kids are leaving them. The very first time I told her that I was applying, she was she didn't react much. But then when I told her that I have gotten admits from there, and then she, I think she realized that I am actually going. I was not just joking around or whatever. She was a bit, yeah, sad. And like I told you, my father, he was... Um, We've had planned to go abroad when I was doing my engineering. But, uh, I mean, I wanted to get some experience, work experience before, because it it is never a bad thing to have experience before. So he had recommended me to go to Germany back when I was doing my engineering. So I I find German very hard. So I was not keen on going to Germany. So then he dropped that idea. But then when I told him that, you know, I'm going to go to UK, he was a bit taken aback. Like he wasn't expecting that because it came out of nowhere in a way. <laughs> so initially they were not really happy to sum it up. But later they were like, okay, fine. It's your life. We'll help you in whatever way we can. So, yeah. Okay, so all happy there then. All all celebrating you being in the UK. Yeah, now yes. Now she's <laughs> boasting around yeah. my mom. She keeps, like, she has some friends who whose kids are in abroad. So now she's like, now even I can tell that my daughter is in the UK. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, what's next for you? What are you going to do after you finish your course? Job for now. But life-wise, I'm going to enjoy UK. <laughs> Like, really enjoy and travel. Like, we've made a literal Excel sheet where we, we want to go to after we graduate and stuff. Uh, first, exploring Wales, then expanding our scope, UK, Scotland, maybe Europe. Uh, I actually did go to Europe. Um, so, that got ticked off my bucket list in a way. <laughs> so, I went to Germany in uh, December for Christmas. Uh, my best friend lives there. And just recently in April, I went to France, Paris and Laval. So we had a VR technical conference. So all of our course mates, we all went with the professor. Yeah, for, it was like for four days, but it was fun. Yeah. So you've been able to travel. Do you think being in the UK is like a good nexus point? Is it a good place to to have those opportunities to see other countries and just travel around the UK in general. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because uh, I think even the flight tickets are cheap, really cheap. And if you have the visa, I mean, for international students, they would require visa. But if they have it sorted, it's so much easier, like so much easier. It's, I think our flight to Paris was as cheap as 20 pounds. Uh, wow. Instead of buying a lunch here, I would rather <laughs> go to Paris for, for like a week. It was really cheap. And I think... Yeah, I think UK would be a really good, like you said, nexus point for traveling. Like Europe is close, US a little far, but still close. Canada is close, Ireland, Scotland, everything is close. So we've talked about a lot today. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Is there anything you'd like to say to to students out there who's listening who might be considering applying to study in the UK from abroad? Don't have boundaries. Like, you know, keep your mind open, be open to anything and everything because... You never know what might come your way. My plan initially was completely different than where I am right now. But I'm still, I'm really happy where I am right now because I think this stage is like a stepping stone for my future. And I would, I want to experience every stone that I have to cross. Uh, for advice, for scholarships, do apply. Even if you don't get it, that's fine. You you get to experience everything. I tell this to my younger sister as well and my fellow friends as well that, you know, just do it. Just do it for the sake of experience. You If you get it, if you don't, that's fine. That's, that's luck. So that's all I would say that, you know, just try. Be it UK, be it any other country abroad. Just give it a shot. Just give it a shot. We, we may say that, you know, people have that perception that grass is greener on the other side. Sometimes it really is. <laughs> Amazing. Um, thank you for your time today, Shrushti. And if you've enjoyed this episode and want to find out any more information about studying in the UK, want to listen to any of the other episodes in this series, please visit swansea.ac.uk forward slash international.